Akuo, welcome to the very first ever church service that we're having. My name is Abel, and I'm your worship leader here at Akuo Church, and I'm just so excited that the day is finally here. I don't know what to do. I'm just so full of joy that I think we need to sing some songs. But before we do that, I just want to acknowledge the fact that your first act of worship here at this new church is actually simply just clicking that link and believing that you may encounter the God of all creation who loves you infinitely more than you could ever imagine here in community with us. And for that, I am just so honored and thankful that you would give us that opportunity. So what I want us to do is get up off your couch, get get up doing whatever you're doing, and let's sing some songs and get excited that this day is finally here and just sing out that he is so much better than anything we could ever imagine. I've searched the world. Oh, I've searched the world. But it couldn't fail me A man's empty praise And treasures of faith Are never enough That you came along And you put me back together And every desire is now satisfied here in your love there's nothing better than you oh there's nothing better than you there's nothing better than you lord there's nothing nothing is better than you oh that's the truth so let's sing out, I'm not afraid to show you my weakness. So I'm not afraid to show you my weakness. Every failure and flaw, Lord, you've seen them all and you still call me friends. Cause the God of the mountain is a God of the valley yes he is and there's not a place your mercy and grace won't find me again oh oh there's nothing better than you there's nothing better than you Lord there's nothing Nothing is better than you. All right, we're going to sing. He turns mourning to dancing. All of the great things that he turns around for his glory. Let's sing these out. You turn mourning to dancing. You give beauty for ashes You turn shame into glory You're the only one who can You turn mourning to dancing You turn beauty for ashes You turn shame into glory you're the only one who can graves into gardens you turn graves into gardens you turn bones into armies you turn seas into highways you're the only one who can you're the
and people that come together the strangest neighbors our blood is one and children of generations of every nation of kingdom come don't let your heart so don't let your heart be troubled hold your head up high don't fear no evil fix your eyes on this one truth God is madly in love with you take courage hold on be strong remember where our help comes from oh, 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 oh. come on let's sing Jesus all together Jesus our redemption our salvation is in his blood oh your blood alone jesus light of heaven friend forever his kingdom come so don't let your heart be troubled Hold your head up high, don't fear no evil. Fix your eyes on this one truth. God is madly in love with you. Take courage, hold on, be strong. Remember where our help comes from. Oh, up swing wide and swing wide all you heavens let the praise go up as the wars come down all creation everything with breath repeat the sound all his children clean hands pure hearts good grace good God his name is Jesus all right what's his name let's sing this out Jesus, our redemption and our salvation is in his blood. And Jesus, light of heaven, a friend forever, his kingdom come. One more time, but sin Cristo. Cristo, el que salva, la esperanza, en su sangre está solamente Cristo. Cristo, luz del cielo, Rey eterno, amigo fiel. Padre, te damos gracia por ser el amigo fiel que siempre los enseña tu misericordia, Dios. Dalos el, el aliento en nuestros pulmones. Te pedimos que podemos escuchar tu voz hoy 
en todos los días. So Father, we just thank you so much for the grace and mercy that you pour out every single day of our lives. We can't thank you enough for sending your son Jesus down to die our death and pay our price. So the best that we know how, God, we worship you and we lay down our lives at your feet. We pray all these things in your son's glorious and beautiful name, the name of Jesus. And everyone said, amen. You guys enjoy the rest of the service. Hi, everyone. For the first time, I get to preach as the pastor of Akula Church, and I can't tell you how happy and excited I am to be a part of this community. I just want you to know that I wouldn't be here right now without the handful of people and churches. Now, first off, I have to shout out my family, right? My parents, siblings, grandparents, aunts, uncles, and cousins have all been a great support system for my entire life, and especially as we've gotten this church started. So thank you guys so much. Then to my beautiful wife, Lauren, and our kids, Jude and Camila, you three are the ones that I can always laugh with. You three are the ones that have helped me along in this journey more than you'll ever know. You three are always the best part of every day of my life. And I thank God for you every single day. Thank you. Now, when it comes to churches, I will forever be connected to my friends at City Tribe Church led by Pastor Doug Robbins. Doug has been my pastor since I was in college and he helped me go from a ridiculous college kid to a pastor that, that's still pretty ridiculous. But even more than that, he's a dear friend that is like family. Thank you, Doug and my City Tribe fam. I'd also like to thank our friends at Meta Church, led by Pastor Clayton Tyner. We literally wouldn't have a video stream right now for you guys if it wasn't for their team, so thank you guys for that. Then we have our friends at Redeemer Lutheran Church, led by Pastor Mike Bailey. Mike and the president of their board, Fritz, have been amazing in helping us get Akuo off the ground. I'd also like to thank City Church out on Bandera Road, led by Pastor Brent Sadoff. City Church will always be a special place for me. I found City Church back when I was in college, and at that time I was feeling lost and angry and frankly broken. And it was there at City Church that God connected me to Doug and an amazing group of friends that changed my life forever. And for that, I will forever be grateful to City Church and the people I met there. Now, I get to stand on the other side. I get to help create a church that will reach the lost for God. I get to help start a place that will create communities for people that are in need. I get to help start a place that will create communities for the people that are broken. And I get to do all of these things with you. And as you're watching this, I pray that you feel a spark that is lit by God. I pray that your role in a Kuo Church community will start to become clear today. Here at Akuo Church, we exist so that people will be in relationship with Jesus and one another. And we will do that by following the four pillars that God has set out in front of us. We're going to listen to God. We're going to love people. We're going to lead by empowering. And we're going to link to our community. These four pillars are listed in order for a reason. Because you can't love people, lead by empowering, or link to a community in the best way possible without listening to God first. Now, I don't want you to get intimidated by the idea of listening to God. I want you to know that it is incredibly simple to engage in. Incredibly simple. And we see this happen, this simplicity happen, in the story of the biblical character Samuel. You see, his story actually starts before he was even conceived. Samuel's mother, Hannah, was unable to have children. So one day, she's in the temple and she prays to God. She prays that if God would give her a son, she would give that son over to the Lord. Hannah promises to take him to the priests and he would live there with them for the rest of his life. So what happens? Well, God happens. He comes through on Hannah's prayer. Her son, that she named Samuel, will belong to God for his entire life. So when Samuel is three, he's sent to live with the priest and those priests are led by a man named Eli. Samuel is brought up in all the ways of God and is doing a great job serving. And in this section that we're about to read, Samuel's probably an adolescent and is hanging out in the temple when he hears a voice that he's unsure of. 1 Samuel 3 says this, Suddenly, the Lord called out, 
Samuel. Yes, Samuel replied. What is it? He got up and ran to Eli. Here I am. Did you call me? I didn't call you, Eli replied. Go back to bed. So he did. Then the Lord called out again, Samuel. Again, Samuel got up and went to Eli. Here I am. Did you call me? I didn't call you, my son, Eli said. Go back to bed. Samuel did not yet know the Lord because he'd never had a message from the Lord before. So the Lord called him a third time and once more Samuel got up and went to Eli. Here I am, did you call me? Then Eli realized it was the Lord who was calling the boy. So he said to Samuel, go and lie down again. And if someone calls again, say, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. So Samuel went back to bed. And the Lord came and called as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel replied, speak, your servant is listening. Now, from that moment on, God spoke to Samuel in amazing ways, in ways that he didn't speak to most of his believers during that time. It's in this moment that Samuel goes from a normal person to a full-blown prophet that can actually hear what God has to say. He got a spiritual upgrade. Now remember how Samuel got to this point. It wasn't by jumping through a bunch of spiritual hoops. He didn't have to be hours deep in meditation. It was simple. All he had to say was, speak. Your servant is listening. All it took was letting God know that he was his servant. And that's the only thing you have to do is just let God know that you are a servant. Which brings us to the big idea that I want to leave with you today. Listen to God and he will lead you well. Listen to God and he will lead you well. A handful of years ago, I read this story of Samuel. I saw the power that came from one statement that Samuel made to God. So one day during prayer time, I said the same thing. I said, God, speak. Your servant is listening. I I didn't hear anything immediately, but I noticed things happening around me. I felt like I would get these ideas or a sense of what I was supposed to do. At first, it was super scary, but each time I would listen to this voice or sense of what to do, it would turn out very well. Then the more I listened, the more it would happen. The more I was willing to be a servant of God through listening, the more I heard from him. Over the years, I've had some nice stories come out of hearing God's voice in my life, but none of them really stack up to how we started this church at Kuo. The story starts for me back in 2012. My wife and I had moved into the Deco District and I felt a sense of God telling me to pray for this building. It was an old school on Fredericksburg Road uh, that is on the same property as uh, Redeemer Lutheran Church. That church actually owned the school building. So I'm like, okay, God, that's, that's awesome. Maybe someday somebody can do a church there. Now, as I live there, every time I'm driving up and down Fredericksburg uh, and I remember, I try to pray for this building. And over the years, I go from a part-time employee at City Tribe to a full-blown pastor. So I continue down the path of God's words. I get something from Doug saying that I'm supposed to pastor my own church someday, which is cool, but I didn't have a crew or anything to start this with. Then I'm talking to God, I'm like, where do you want me to go? And he goes, your buddy Abel, he's going to be your worship leader. And at that point, I'd never heard Abel sing anything at all. And it turns out, he's pretty good. And, And I'm so thankful to have him along on this journey. So from that point on, nothing happens for a long time and I start to doubt. Is this just my ambition? Am I just telling myself that this is supposed to happen so I can climb the corporate ladder of Jesus? But that's not how it goes. I tell God, I go, Lord, you need to show me people in front of me if this is real. Now, minutes after that prayer, Doug comes to me out of nowhere to speak some words that God told him about me. He said, I'm going to serve and grow a community fight and crush demonic presences, and that this will be a sports-related church. Well, days after I get done with this talk, Carlos, a friend of mine, texts me out of nowhere. He says, hey, how much is that old school building in the neighborhood renting for? I heard that you've been praying about this building. And then we talk a bunch, and he's encouraging me to move and, and start doing things with it. A few days later after that, it's a Sunday. I go to the prayer team to pray with me about this this subject and we pray and I get a picture in my head. Now, I'll tell you about that picture in a second. But after the prayer is over, Bree shares with me what God had told her a long time ago. She said that God told her, follow Humby wherever he goes. 
Bree is now a part of our board of trustees at Akua Church. So during this prayer, I got a picture of me knocking on the door of Redeemer Lutheran Church. When I could see it, I heard God say, ask for it. Now, like a good and faithful servant, I replied to God, no, because I I'm scared. I don't do things like that. I don't like to show vulnerability like that. I don't like to ask for things. And he just said, ask for it. And I was like, well, I'll think about it. And then the next day I get a text from Bree. She said, I was reading this in my Bible and God told me to send it to you. It said, and I tell you, ask and it will be given. Seek and you will find, knock and it will be open to you. For everyone who asks receives and the one who seeks finds and to the one who knocks, it will be opened. So at that point, I don't really have a choice. God's talking to me and I have to listen. So a few days later, I go to the Redeemer Lutheran Church. I walk up, knock on the back door, nobody answers. I go to the front because that's what I saw in my picture. So I go to the front door, knock, nobody answers. Then I go to the side door. And when I'm knocking on the side door, I hear, you're at the wrong door, but I, I can't find the person. Uh, they're, they're not anywhere. And then finally she walks around the corner and she says, when I come over here, I go to the front door. And she walks away and like disappears. I, I never see her again. So then I keep on knocking, no answer, no answer. And I finally go to the back door where I started. And I'm like, okay, God, I did my part. I'm out. And he says, keep knocking. So I go back to the first door I knocked on and the door opens quickly. And it's the pastor of the church standing there, Mike Bately. And I'm caught off guard. I'm like, uh, uh, sir, uh, um, do you, you have a few minutes? I'm a pastor. I live in the neighborhood. And he's just like, yeah, that's great. Come on in. Come, come sit down. And so I sit down. I start talking to him I'm like, this is going to sound crazy. And I tell him the whole story. Everything that I've been telling you so far. And I finished my story with, so I'm here to ask for a building? I, I don't really know what, what happens now. I don't know what happens here, Mike. And Pastor Mike is great. He tells me that he isn't the person that can make the call on his own. He's actually the interim pastor, but he says he'll be an advocate for us. And Mike has done just that. And as of July 1st, we have a lease on a school building. When all of this COVID stuff calms down, we will open up our doors and we will meet up in person. And I can't wait for that day. Remember, listen to God and he will lead you well. Now, one of the things I always have people ask me about is the name, Akuo. I've heard people call it Akuna, uh, Ayuyo, uh, Oahu. Uh, just to be clear, it's not any of those guys. And I want everyone to say this with me, Akuo. If you're watching it, streaming right now, type it into the chat. A-K-O-U-O, Akuo. Now, I'm not a branding or marketing smart guy. I knew I didn't have a name for the church, so I asked God, what should it be called? And he said, listen. And I said, okay, I am. And then he said, listen. And I said, I'm listening to you. Tell me what it is. And then he said, listen. And I saw a picture of myself doing research, and I said, oh, do a word study of the word listen in the, old, in the New Testament. So just so you know, the New Testament's original language is Greek. So when I looked it up, the Greek word for listen is akuo. So the literal meaning of akuo is listen, but the figurative meaning is to hear God's voice, which prompts God to birth faith within. Now here's where it gets really crazy. So as I was praying about this sermon, God brought to mind the story of Samuel. And it made sense to me because it was a story that really propelled me to change how I serve God. Well, I started to deep dive into the words of what we read in 1 Samuel. And when I got to the end where Samuel says, speak, your servant is listening, something hit me and I researched more. You see, when the Old Testament was translated from Hebrew to Greek, the word at the end, the last word that Samuel speaks to God before his life is changed forever, it's a kuo. Now, the prayer that helped me change my life is now the name of the church that God has asked me to be a leader in. Listen to God and he will lead you well. This word is all over the Bible. As a matter of fact, I've already have a series that I'm thinking through where we will look at a bunch of times the word is used in the Bible and we're going to break down how we can use it in our lives. One of my favorites comes in Mark 2. So let's jump into the story there in Mark 2. There it says, six days later, Jesus took Peter, James, and John and led them up a high mountain to be alone. As the men watched, Jesus' appearance was transformed. And his clothes became dazzling white, far whiter than any earthly bleach could ever make them. Then Elijah and Moses, two dead heroes of the Jewish faith, appeared and began talking with Jesus. 
Peter exclaimed, Rabbi, it's wonderful for us to be here. Let's make three shelters as memorials, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He said this because he didn't really know what else to say, for they were all terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my dearly loved son. Listen, a kuo, to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, Moses and Elijah were gone, and they saw only Jesus with them. As they went back down the mountain, Jesus told them not to tell anyone what they had seen until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. So they kept it to themselves, but they often asked each other what he meant by rising from the dead. To be super honest, I could preach an entire sermon on this, but I want to hone in on what God was saying. He wants us to listen to his Son. He wants us to listen to Jesus. Then the first thing that Jesus talks about is waiting until the Son of Man, which is the name he gave to himself, has rise, raised from the dead. Essentially in that moment, Jesus explained what he was going to do. That he would die for our mess ups. That he would descend into death, then be raised up three days later and eventually go back to heaven. Jesus very quickly let them know what was going on. So we're supposed to listen to Jesus. We're supposed to believe that he did these things. And it's through this belief, this belief that Jesus was a son of man, lived a life without sin, and became the ultimate sacrifice for us that we will spend an eternity with him. Not only that, it gives us access to the Holy Spirit while we're here on earth. By believing in Jesus, we have the Holy Spirit reside within us. Now we have access to hearing God in the same way Samuel did. Now, for some of you watching, you don't have that access. However, something has been leaning on you for weeks and you feel like something has to change right now. You want to have the chance to hear from God. You need guidance. If that's you, I want you to pray something like this to yourself. You can go ahead and bow your head and do that. Just say, Lord, I'm not fully sure who you are or how you really work, but there is something in me that can't deny you anymore. I want to see you in my life in the clearest way possible. I know that I've messed up in my life and I'm sorry. So right here, right now, I want you to know that I believe you died on the cross for my sins. And the best way I know how, I want to follow you. Let me experience your grace, love, and peace and your voice. Thank you for your patience with me. Amen. Now, for others that are watching, you know God. You know that Jesus died for you but you still want to hear from him in a way that you never have before. If that's you, I want you to pray something like this with me. Just pray, Father, thank you for everything. Thank you for your love and your forgiveness. I ask that you would calm my heart right now. I ask that you would make my confusion fade. I pray that you would whisper peace into my life. Father, I'm listening. Please speak. Your servant is listening. Amen. All right, let's sing this out when you speak. When you speak, confusion fades. Just a word. And suddenly I'm not afraid because you speak. And freedom reigns. There is hope. Every single word you say, I don't want to miss one word you speak. Cause everything you say is life to me. I don't want to miss one word you speak. So quiet my heart, I'm listening. Sorrows roll and troubles rage. You whisper peace when I don't have the words to say. I won't lose hope when storms won't break. You keep your word and your promises will keep me safe. 
I don't want to miss one word you speak Cause everything you say is life to me And I don't want to miss one word you speak So quiet my heart, I'm listening that you would quiet our hearts, that you would eliminate those distractions that are keeping us from listening to you, Lord. Open our hearts, open our ears to see what you would tell us. And the best that we know how, Lord, we choose to listen to your voice. So Jesus, I, I pray that you just speak so clearly to every single person tuning in. So we love you, we praise you, and we worship you. We pray all these things in your name, Jesus. Amen. Well, thank you for being a part of our first ever service here at Akuo. If you need anything at all, don't hesitate to message us on our social media platforms, or you can go to our website, akuo.church, A-K-O-U-O dot church to contact us. Next, I want to talk about how we practice generosity here at Akuo. What we do is practice the biblical method of giving called tithing, which means giving a first fruit 10% offering to the storehouse, which is your local church. Now, we did that exact thing last Sunday. We could have had a service, but instead, we gave it back to the Lord. Not only that, we gave our very first check we received as a church, as a cool, and we took 10% out of that and we sent it to another church that will be planting their own church later this year. And we plan to do that with every single tithe we receive. We will not be stingy with our money. We are going to do our best to model generosity for all of you. We believe that when you trust God with anything in your life, you get a blessing out of it for trusting God. And we believe it's the same with your finances. Now, I'm not saying you're going to get that Maserati you always wanted or the hovercraft that you had your eye on, but you will receive a spiritual blessing from God, a peace, a relief, if you trust him with any aspect of your life. So we don't want you to miss out on this blessing with your finances. Now, you can tithe here at Akuo by going to our website, akuo.church, A-K-O-U-O dot church, and clicking on the giving link. Now, one last thing. Each Wednesday night, we have a Bible study through Zoom. It's a time where we all get together and read through the Bible, then break out in the digital small groups and discuss what we are studying. 
It's been a lot of fun each and every week, and we would love to see you there. The link is posted in all of our social media right now. And we would also like to let you know that we will remind you about this the day of, on Wednesday. All right, guys, that's our first service. I want you to know that I love you all, and I'm praying for each and every one of you. I'll see you soon.